Every morning in the wild, a gazelle awakens. One thing is for sure for the gazelle that day, as every other. She must run faster than the fastest lion. If she cannot, she will be killed and eaten. Every morning, a lion awakens. For the lion too, one thing is certain. This day and every day, he must run faster than the slowest gazelle. Whether fate names you a gazelle or a lion is of no consequence. It is enough to know that with the rising of the sun, you must run, and you must run faster than the day before for the rest of your days, or you will die. We all have to run, run the race of life. A possible event happened on our planet over three and a half billion years ago. Life. It grew into countless creatures. Giant reptiles with armor plating and killer teeth. Bizarre mammals with wings. The fight to eat or not be eaten was the driving force. How did all these animals come to be? Why are they all so different? They have all been running in a race, a race to survive each day. The fastest, the strongest, the smartest. They have developed unique tools and skills. They are winners in the race of life. Hero is a man with an idea. It sums up the reason for every creature living on Earth. Charles Darwin. Darwin saw that all life comes from one ancestor. The amazing variety evolved because they are chosen by nature. Animals born the right shape or size will live. Those who are not are doomed to die. It is the survival of the fittest. Among the most ancient creatures alive is a living dinosaur, the crocodile, the largest reptile on Earth. There are 14 species of crocodile on Earth today. Most live in and around the tropics. Crocodiles can be seven meters long and weigh a thousand kilograms. They've been around for 55 million years, a giant lizard perfectly equipped to kill. This is the strongest jaw in the world. It can bite down with a force of over 1.6 tons. Once locked in here, there is no escape. Crocodiles might look primitive, but they also have finely tuned hearing, smell, and eyesight. In East Africa, the crocodile's favorite food is preparing to move out. To survive the dry season, zebra and wildebeest must migrate to greener pastures. To get there, they need to enter the world of the crocodile. They must cross the Mara River, 
There is safety in numbers, so both species will cross together. At first, a few brave individuals test the water. The crocodiles are alerted. Crocodiles can swim over 30 kilometers per hour. They can even run on land in short bursts. But their preferred method of killing is ambush. A mass of animals plunges into the river. For the crocodiles, it's hard to select a target in the frenzy of movement. For the zebra and wildebeest, there is safety in numbers. But there's always one, a weaker swimmer, the very young and old, or just the unlucky one. Most of the herd will get across the river, but some will lose the race of life today. The winners will produce offspring who are stronger, faster, smarter. So these herds will continue to evolve to survive. The crocodiles are also evolving to survive. They are cold-blooded animals so they can live on a kilo of meat a day. But they do not know when the next meal will come, so they fight for every scrap of food. This aggression guarantees the strongest will survive. They will pass on their genes to their young. Darwin's survival of the fittest is played out every day all over the world. This is the race of life. Darkness falls, and another primeval creature is about to rise. A creature of myths and nightmares. Afraid of the daylight, they live inside caves and emerge at night. They are the inspiration for the most chilling character in our culture. Bram Stoker's Dracula. Bats. They are the only mammal with the power of true flight. Over 1,200 different kinds of bat exist today. Three feed on blood, but most eat insects or fruit. Some roost on the ceiling in their thousands. Staying close together will keep the bats warm in the chill of the cave. And this gymnastic sleeping arrangement keeps them out of reach of most predators. The sky at night is the dominion of the bat. Most birds are asleep, so there is almost no competition for food. There are also fewer predators around. Bats have evolved to hang upside down. Their claws are designed to grip hard, the perfect position for a high-speed takeoff. At night, bats are the kings of the air. They are precision flyers. And they see with their ears. Each bat is sending out a high-pitched noise. The sound bounces off everything, giving the bat a clear picture of the surrounding darkness. It's called echolocation. It means the bat's prey has almost nowhere to hide.
these amazing animals are able to adapt to survive. A few species are awake during the day. They are bigger animals and dine out on fruit, and in one case, even fish. Perhaps this is the reason bats have survived for 50 million years. As the sun rises, the nocturnal bats return to the cave. They are tired, but despite their isolated home, they cannot relax. In nature, the race of life never stops. The bat is a predator, but it is about to become the prey. Predator is attempting rooftop dining. This python has decided the dangerous climb is worth it for a meal. She's prepared to take the risk to win her own race of life. Our planet is dominated by the sea. It covers over two thirds of the surface and can be as deep as 10 kilometers. One species has been living here for over a hundred million years. These creatures have been perfecting their design through generations of swimming, hunting, and killing. Sharks. They are highly sensitive to prey, and when they find it, they are fast and ruthless. Over 500 different sharks now exist. They all have unique shapes and skills to survive. Sand sharks have teeth like needles for impaling fish. They are able to gulp in air so they can float motionless in the water to ambush their prey. The hammerhead's bizarre head shape allows her to see above and below at the same time. They have also been seen using their heads to pin down rays and skates before eating them. The tiger shark is built for high speed turns. He has a wedge shaped head to cut through the water and a high back and dorsal fin to act as a pivot. The great white. Some of these monsters grow to six meters. They can swim over 40 kilometers per hour. Their size and strength protect them from almost all predators. Sharks are perfectly designed killers. Their streamlined bodies are covered in nerve endings. They can detect tiny movements in the ocean from far away using electroreceptors. They are so sensitive, they can pick up electric currents as small as a billionth of a volt. A school of barracuda. These ferocious predators can be over two meters long. They will attack on mass, taking on fish even bigger than themselves. But today, the barracuda are the prey. The fish form a ball of swirling bodies to confuse the attacker. They have been spotted by a black-tipped reef shark. The race of life is on. Reef sharks are attracted to splashing movements and can detect the scent of blood from injured fish. When other sharks are present, the excitement builds into a feeding frenzy. They live in the colder waters of Great White Territory. Many of these seals have learned that if they swim out on the seabed, they are safe. But if they stay out on the surface, the sharks will strike. The seal is no match.
The albatross very rarely needs to rest, but when he does, he's in immediate danger. For the albatross and the shark, the race of life is on. Sharks live in almost every marine environment. Nowhere is safe. From warm coral seas to cold open oceans, every creature that swims below or above the surface could be in the sights of one of these ancient ocean predators. Birds, mammals, fish, they're all flying, swimming, watching to live another day and to win the race of life. The largest shark of all is harmless to us, the whale shark. This gentle monster of the ocean is the most peaceful shark of all. His giant mouth is 1.5 meters wide, but it contains only small teeth and filter pads. Whale sharks prey on fish and plankton. They can filter 6,000 liters of water every hour. Whale sharks have few predators. Their defense is their size. They can reach 12 and a half meters in length. Like most sharks, the female is larger than the male. Whatever their size, these graceful fish run their race of life at a gentle pace. To find one of the oldest survivors on the planet, we must travel from salt water to fresh water from the tropics to the temperate regions, from open seas to rivers and pools, to an island continent that's been drifting alone for 99 million years. The platypus part mammal, marsupial, part something else. This strange creature has larger prehistoric ancestors that lived in South America. But now he lives only in Australia. The male has poisonous spurs on his hind legs. Venom production peaks during the mating season, so these spurs are probably used to compete for a female. Platypus live in water that is often turbid with low visibility. The platypus is very well adapted to such an environment. Their bills are the ultimate tool for catching food when you can't see far ahead. Rows of receptors precisely detect the tiniest movements in the mud. The platypus is well equipped for life in the river. Skin between the toes has evolved to form webbed feet, homegrown flippers for underwater speed and maneuvering. Even their choice of food is a key to survival. Platypus eat a broad range of animals, so they have many options, from insect larvae and worms to yabbies. Even though they're made for life in the river, they can submerge only for a time period of between 40 and 140 seconds.
Australia is a dry continent and platypus need water to survive. If the water hole disappears, the platypus will die. So rain is a welcome sight. The platypus is a monotreme, one of the few mammals left on the planet that lays eggs. And for this, she must build a burrow in the riverbank. Platypus fur can trap a layer of warm air. Even when the weather's wet, he stays warm and dry. If the worst happens and food supplies dwindle, the platypus has one more trick. He stores surplus energy as fat in his tail to be used up in lean times. He might be odd looking, but this funny creature is the perfect collection of tools to win the race of life. One group of creatures has made a dramatic move to survive. They swim like fish, but have lungs like us. These animals are giants. One of them is the largest animal that has ever lived, whales. 50 million years ago, their ancestors lived on the land. Then they decided to return to the sea. The humpback whale swims halfway around the world every year to breed and find food. The sperm whale can dive to a bone-crushing depth of 2,000 meters. At these depths, they hunt their favorite food, giant squid. The orca can leap clear of the water. No one knows exactly why they do it. Perhaps to surprise prey, or perhaps they're just being playful. Whales have survived for millions of years, but their greatest threat came in the last few hundred. Man, we wanted their oil, their bones, their meat, and we got it on an industrial scale. We nearly wiped out many whales forever. Humans have shown that the best way to win the race of life is to use your brain. Killer whales or orcas have incredible intelligence. They live in family groups and teach their young survival skills. Orcas are large dolphins and can grow up to nine meters in length. Most live among the ice flows of the poles where there's a rich supply of food. They are apex predators, feeding on fish, birds, and seals. This pod of whales are planning their attack. The seal pup has no idea. Even the shallows can be dangerous. Orcas often beach themselves to catch a meal and can swim 50 kilometers per hour. This behavior is distressing to watch, but the whales are trying to stun the seal to make it easier to eat. Seals are fast enough to escape, but not all. By working as a team, the orcas get a meal and live to swim another day. The 
race of life is won by the fittest, the strongest jaw, the best agility, the fastest swim, the sharpest senses, the greatest size, the animal best equipped to live to the end of each day in the race of life.